Uh, dear students, uh, my name is Peter and my surname is Kewowo. I'm your tutor for visual arts, uh, DJPE, BEST, and DPPE. So I will be taking you through some slides that I have prepared for you as you prepare for your August exam. Now take note of this. These slides were prepared for you to prepare for your August exam. Therefore, I urge for you to pay attention so that you listen. And also after the presentation, in case there will be something that you don't understand in the slides, you are welcome to follow me up on my email address as it appears on your screen. That's pkwowo at gmail.com. Send me an email uh, with your cell phone number perhaps so that I'll be able to call you back as soon as I get it. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I will look. Uh, I will want us to look at the contents of, of our study materials. And uh, for DPPE, I think you, you, your study materials have got only up to uh, four units. While for, for, for DJP, you have got until unit six. So unit one is about explaining some basics of visual arts perspectives. That is uh, actually about the importance of visual arts, uh, why students should read uh, or study visual arts and the uh, development studies uh, or how students develop from uh, uh, stage one to, 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 to their uh, last stage as it, uh, in uh, visual arts uh, development consent. And unit two, it's about uh, examining the, the demonstration, how to, how to draw pictures. Unit three is about clarifying and demonstration on how to make models. Unit four, it's about illustrations and clarifying construction and collage works. And uh, unit five, it's about discussions, aspects of teaching, assessing art creations. And unit six, which is about uh, examining and teaching learning activities and materials of visual arts for grade one. Now that is what your whole study uh, material for that you are provided with by IOL is, uh, is having. So, but we will go further and look at which type of or which topics you do you pay more a little bit of uh, attention when you are preparing for your exam. And uh, yes, unit one, you need to look at the aims of uh, art education in pre-primary education or pre-primary, yes, primary education. And uh, let's say if someone from somewhere out there happened to ask you, why must the learners do art? So now there are so many questions or so many answers to this specific question. But here we, we, have, uh, we have just uh, look at one that your short answer to that question will be they do art to express and for the other reason is that they do art to communicate their feelings. Therefore, before we address the value and the general aims of uh, uh, visual art education, we need to look at the meaning of what art is within the perspective of visual arts. Remember, art is a broader word. Under art, we have got uh, performing art, we have got literature, we have got many more. But in this case, we are looking at what visual art is. So what is visual art or what is art? You say that art is a form and it's a content. So why do we say art is a content or why do we say art is a form? We say art is a form because we recognize that the artist uses mediums or materials. Now, what are the mediums or materials? This is if an artist is a painter, what do they use? What is the material if it's not painting? If they make models, if they mold, if they are sculpting, is it bronze or what? Actually, the mediums, which is in other words, a materials, it's just what does that specific artist uses when they are producing the art? And by doing so, they apply the elements of art. You must have, uh, because this, these are the basic of visual art that you should know. What are the elements? When we say that they apply, when they are using those materials, they apply the elements of art. What are we referring to? We are referring to 
the elements that you have learned in your book there are about six where they talk of form they talk of uh, color they talk of texture they talk of lines they talk of shapes uh, so those are the elements of art and also at the same time they apply the principles of art which are now or what are the principles of art if it's not those uh, um, varieties the proportions those kind of those are the basics of visual arts. It's what the artist need to put together in order for the artist to be able to produce an artwork. And they do so while they are as, uh, creating something with appeal. Now, when we say something with appeal, when something is appealing, what do we mean? Something with attractiveness. I don't know what that is. Something that is attracting, something that is interesting within what that specific artist they have created, something that stimulates a feeling when you are looking at that specific thing. So we say that art is a form because we recognize that the artist uses a mediums or materials and apply the elements of art plus the principles of art to create something with appealing. And also we say art is having a content. Why? Because it have got it conveys a meaning or a message. Each and every specific artwork being produced by artists, the artist is trying to share, the artist is trying to tell a story with that specific uh, uh, um, artwork. So, and also that was uh, it about what, um, about what uh, art is. So what is art or what is visual art in education? What is visual arts in education? So that art as a subject falls within the aesthetic or aesthetic beauty. Aesthetic or beauty. Actually, beauty, I think it will be the easier word for you to, 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 to remember since the uh, aesthetic, it's, it's, it's a little bit even bad to, 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 to can be uh, uh, difficult to, to pronounce. So you can say beauty, it's fine the area of learning and having a thematic link with the subject. That's why we say that you cannot necessarily teach art in isolation. So let's say if your project for the art for a week, it's about housing. That, that means you will need to get um, boxes or any little and the simple materials that are not harmful to your learners that they can use to build a house so that when you are learning about housing you have got the theme and you have to demonstrate also as to what you you, you are talking about uh, unit one continues and look at the values of uh, visual art education and we say that uh, visual art education general goal is to enrich the around development of a learner through his or her creative work, the development of his or her artistic attitudes and abilities, the development of love, respect, and sensibility towards creative and artistic expression. Remember, this is about visual arts. It's about producing visual art artworks. It's about expressing or learners expressing themselves. That's why we say that if they are introducing to visual arts at the early stage of age, what does, why do we intend, why should we teach them about visual arts? It's to enrich their creative thinking. It's to develop their artistic ability to see what are they able to do. Can they be able to draw? Are they able to make some little models with their hand? Or are they, what we need to look at, what are they able to create, to express themselves while they are creating something? Let's say if a child is very uh, um, quiet and maybe they don't talk too much in class and so on, but when you give them some uh, artworks or some artistic uh, materials to do something, in the end they will be telling a story of how what they are going through or what they have experienced or what they, they wish to, 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 to experience. So the visual art education helps learners to develop a positive attitude toward uh, the visual art and a will to express themselves through artistic activities. 
Seeing that, what does it help to teach a child about visual arts? It gives them, it, it, it give them the independence to, 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 to give them a positive to, to look at artistic uh, um, materials, uh, artistic uh, works uh, with uh, a positive attitude and also it gives them a will to express. They will also want to, 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 to to go through it, they will also want to create the, 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 their own uh, artworks because art is about having fun. So if you happen to take uh, your learners to a studio where there is an artist busy painting and also the moment they enter that specific uh, studio, they would also want to try and paint something and that is what we mean by it develops a positive attitude towards the visual arts and it also uh, develop a will for them to be able to, to, to want to express themselves through artistic activities. It to discover and develop creativity and uh, also expressive abilities through the use of uh, um, uh, several means, materials and techniques in a variety of activities. Be introduced to the attributes of means, materials and tools offered to them and develop skills for creative expressions. Now why do we have those uh, about uh, dots there? I think there are five of them. That means that what you get here is just a little portion of the information within your book. When you are going to study for your exam, you need to go look at these uh, uh, slides and find the information in your book and look what amount of information are given in the slide and what is left for you to study about in your book because these are just the short versions of a long information in your book and if you want to pass you read this specific slides with together with your book and as we said the slides are just a little bit of information but the more is in your book that is required for you to, to, to find and read uh, you need to, to continue uh, i mean one the general aims of um, art education and we say first in the, 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 the previous slides, it was the, we spoke of the values. Then we spoke of what art education uh, can help le uh, learners with. And now we are talking about the general uh, aims of art education, which includes that uh, art stimulates creativity, art develops self-expression, art develops a hand-eye training, and it also a develop an art and culture language. So we said art stimulates creativity because why? Creativity things therefore when a learner can create an image or something that is only existing in that specific child's mind and they never existed before. When they are able to create something that they cannot see, that is when we say that you know, this uh, specific uh, uh, learner is being creative and uh, therefore in this specific uh, 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 point, it's what we mean by that. It, it, it stimulates the creativity um, uh, um, thinking. In your book, I think there's an example of uh, whereby if you give a child a picture of a dog and ask a child to draw that specific picture, then we say that there in that specific process, uh, creativity is not being stimulated or the child is not being creative, creative because why? The child is just copying the picture. But in case when you just describe of how a dog looks like without showing any pictures and then the child is able now to, to get the information and try to, to transform them in a drawing without looking at any picture, then in that specific sense we can say that the child is being creative. Why? Because they are not copying, rather they are transforming the image in the mind into a piece of paper. So you say art develops a creative expression, therefore a learner can read before a learner can read and write, art is the only way to express, or to express what they know, feel, or what they want to communicate to others. That means you draw before you can actually read or write. And what do we do that? They are able to tell stories and uh, also explain to you what they say. That's why I think in your book it is the first uh, stage of development uh, there, which is called the scribbling uh, uh, deve uh, development st uh, stage, between two and four. By that specific time, maybe the child is not cannot write, but they take a pen and they just put some marks on a piece of paper. But if you happen to ask them, what did you draw there? Those scribbled uh, uh, um, 
uh, lines you see there, the child will be able to tell you this is mama or this is daddy, this is my brother, this is all. That is what we mean here. And uh, we also say that art uh, offers or presents or uh, stimulates the hand-eye training. This is about, not really about being creative, but it's about the motor skills. How is the child able to see and able to use the hand to, 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 to imitate what they are seeing? Art and culture, there is a way by which we, regardless of what, you don't need to explain to children anything. Just give them the art materials, ask them to draw anything. I tell you, you will learn that they are either drawing out of their houses, what happens in their cultures, and that is what we mean by the identity of the young learner is linked with her all his culture and not cannot be separated so it, it's art is always linked to that if you bring even uh, with uh, a professional artist if you happen to bring them together from different cultures and backgrounds i tell you you'll be able to see this through their uh, piece of art uh, studio um we are still under unit one stage of development we have got about we have identified about five different uh, uh, stages of development and i don't want us to go through one by one here but i want you to take time as you are preparing for your studies i want you to read and i want you to to, to know to be able to differentiate what happens in scribbling uh, um, a group of stage that is a stage between four two years and four years what happens what type of drawings can you expect from children within under that specific age this prismatic stage also also called the symbolic stage what type of drawings and how are they differ from the drawings of the previous stage same with semantic stage which is between seven and nine how are their what types of drawings can you expect from there and how are these uh, uh, what is the improvement Comparing to stage one, which is between two and four, stage two, which is between four and seven, and that specific semantic stage that is between seven and nine. So, what is is there any improvement? Remember, we said scribbling. We are just the, the child is just uh, rolling the pen around the paper, and in the prismatic, the, the, the child is able to make some rounds there, but it's able also to put some funny feet and also hand. How does that improve when you come to semantic? How do you it improve when you come to realistic and to the decision? Now the realistic and decision stages. This were part of your let's say this was part of your, your, your assignment. And I tell you, you in your assignment you could do better in your scribbling, in a pre-semantic and in a semantic. But when you come to realistic, then your drawing there even looked even the previous uh, the, the semantic uh, stage are even better. The stage itself it says realistic. So what does it mean? Meaning that at that specific stage, the learner knows and is aware of how the things they see them in the reality. And as they are drawing, they are trying. They are trying to get it right as it exists. So same as the stage development, the decision development, that is when they are, they are now learning to know, they are understanding that actually visual art is not a subject that uh, is for merit, like it said there, but uh, it's either they decide if they want to continue drawing that is now when they have discovered that they have got a talent or a hobby of doing it or but it does not mean that they don't draw better they actually draw better because they are away okay the application of visual arts in craft and advertising now first we need to understand the term these two different terms what does craft means and how what does uh, advertisement means before we can go and see if there's a linkage with them in connection to the visual arts. We said that craft is an activity involving skills in making things by hand, while advertising is a notice or an announcement in a public medium promoting a product, a service, or an event, or pub uh, publishing a job vacancy. So. And in the visual arts, they say that many people believe that designers are artists and artists are designers. And in many instances or many examples, they are, but design has more what commercial connotations to it, meaning that designs it's more done for commercial purposes. It is a more calculated and defined process comparing to, 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 to craft 
that you just produce things as you fill them, but they are no bot lines set or something. You can just design it or make it the way you feel like making. And it's much in the way that engineer, isn't it like it's compared to engineers uh, uh, plans as a project. But instead of using building plans, the designer focuses on color style, but they must uh, pay close attention to functions as well. So I want you to be able to read this information in your book and uh, understand and the, 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 try to understand the, the language. How is the craft and advertised advertisement related to visual arts? Using art in advertising was a very popular trend a couple of centuries ago. Today is considered as vintage, not really important, not really um, necessary for visual arts as uh, it's, it's, it's used to, to be before. You need to two perspectives in drawing. You said that the perspective is a principle of, uh, of, of, of art and we, we refer to a geometrical perspectives, also sometimes called the linear perspectives. And uh, under the specific uh, perspectives, it, it makes subjects in a drawing look they sit in two distance, uh, distant space. But what we are trying to say here that it's because of perspectives that we are able to identify that this is an art piece and in this specific art piece there is a human being and then the human being have got the eyes and all that. So it's, it's, it's about what makes the, 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 the the drawing look 3D mentions or and not flat, what creates the uh, foreground, the middle ground, the, the background. So that this is what is it is when we talk about the perspective. Actual perspective drawing is what brings the drawing to reality uh, within itself. So you need to read this uh, specific information and know what um, in drawing, so that even when you are teaching your, 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 your children, you know when the, 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 the picture is out or when it's uh, within the perspective uh, as expected. And uh, there are some terminologies that are used in uh, perspective drawings, and I expect you to read through yourself. The horizon line, I want you to understand what it means. Perspective lines, I want you to, 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 to read it, understand what it means and what it represents within the art piece. The same with the angular and the vanishing point. Different types of colors, also the colors, these are simple information that you should know because there is no way you can do a specific art activity if you don't know your colors. There's just those specific colors that are found on the color wheel and we start with the basic colors. Base colors, namely, as they are named here, red, blue, and yellow. These are colors that you cannot mix others to achieve them, but you can mix them to achieve any other colors. Now, I want you to, be, to know them. I want you to, to, to know what are the primary colors, what are the secondary colors, and how they are achieved to get a secondary color. What do you need? And the tertiary colors, what do you need to arrive to an attention on what they are? So I want you to read this information on your own. Uh, Cry Unity 3, which is about clarifying and demonstrating how to make models. In pre-primary education, we start with the box construction and then move to other materials like clay. If you consult the book, there is a book that you are required to read there, you will find uh, detailed descriptions of art lessons. That means in that specific book, if you happen to get a hand on it, you will see that there are many different art lessons and it's also uh, described or you are given details of how you should plan for them and if you want to, 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 to teach them in your class. But in this case we look at clay as, a, that is as one of those specific activities. Now what I want you to go and prepare, I want you to be able, if because it's one of the basic, even though if you will need some weaving and stitching materials, the clay, it's, it's one of the activities that children enjoy most when they are doing. So I want you to, to be able to prepare that specific plan for, for, for clay. What will you need and how will you, 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 you carry it on? Uh, and also the different uh, learning areas or themes in subjects where model can be used for teaching. So what is a model? It's important that in each and every learning that you are doing, understand the key words there. 
and in this case the keyword is model so what is it and they say that it's a small replica of something it can be a house a car fruit or a planet or many others a replica it means a little something that you did to represent the reality the real thing of that maybe you take a clay and then you mold a car then that will be a replica something that looks like that specific uh, model that you want to use why are they used we will use a model if it's important that learners know what you are talking about you have to demonstrate because some children they have never seen what you are talking about or they have never heard of it before so it's important that you 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 put uh, you have a model so you need to know what type of models can be used depending on the age group that you are working with and you need to go with the most simple and familiar models that are known by children you don't need to take difficult things that are hard for them to understand that's why we have got a family or healthy workers they go to hospitals and they see nurses all the time transport and the houses they see cars and come in so this you need and the animals you need a little of this uh, information that are very closer to the student or to the learners and they see them in every day of their lives that are the things that you bring to to, to life so important for you to know here know what a model is and also what does entails and why is it used and the examples of models that you can use in your in your class they will also need the puppets so this is just um, a little more additional um, information to the models but it's required for you to study so that you understand this only if you understand these specific uh, activities you are able to teach them not only for exam purposes or assignment purposes but you need to know this as you are a, a, a future uh, teacher at some point somewhere in your future so how do we involve children in modeling activities how do you make children part of the activity now as your book says, there are three different projects in your prescribed book. The first project is the pitch pot, and the other one is the slab pot, and again the coil pot. So I want you to, to read through how does a pitch pot made, how does a slab pot made, how does a coil pot. I want you to, once you read about this one, you will understand how can a child become part of it you as a teacher what do you need to prepare and when do you need to invite learners in hmm? so because it's a lot of information if you have to go through by through but let's say here let's it says to start with you can let the learners take a piece of clay and mold it can you see you are already involving learners because it, you let learners take a piece of clay and start molding that that's part of their involvement their involvement this is a wonderful finger exercise as they are molding they are exercising their fingers and they are also in, in, the, in the for muscular uh, coordination then you can let them roll can you see you can let them let them take pieces of clay let them roll it's, it's, it's all about how you get the learners that is when the learners becoming part of it and you need to 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 to, to, to understand because what makes student fail about this type of things is that they don't understand the question when you ask how to involve learners you end up talking about you yourself just doing the whole activity but there is no part that the, the learner have played so i want that's why I, I i urge you to read and understand so that even when you are taking this activity to class you know which one is your part and which part is for the learners to play they can break the coil. This is still uh, um, the process of, um, of, of working under those three different activities, but it's required for you to read. Uh, unit 4, illustrate and clarify uh, structures, constructing and collage work. Collage, not college. Collage work, it's another term for that specific. It's pasting. It's about using materials or papers and you have got glue and you are sticking them together in a way while you are creating an image so and also the construction they are talking about here is not about constructing using machineries to build a, a real house it's about boxes cutting pieces of boxes and you are constructing a house because remember it's a learner who are between seven and nine doing this type of constructions. Now they say that there are two types of uh, construction uh, box, uh, of box constructions. 
in um, or for junior learners one is um yes, so you need to, to 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 know these two types of uh, constructions and also how they differ what happens in one and what happens in the other and again you you need to that's why it says here that the one activity is to collect boxes of all shapes and size so what happens in that one and the second one is the construction activity is where learners uses box and and, and construct 3d uh, objects and how do you involve learners in those specific activities again how do you make learners become part of the activity you are teaching Maybe you send them to correct the boxes. Maybe you ask them to sort them out. Maybe you ask them to cut. Them. How do they become part? And you need to, if you don't know how to involve learners in these specific activities, how are you going to, 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 to teach them? Because doing things for them, then that means they were just observing you doing your things. But they need to be part of it. They need to feel the ownership, they need to come up with something while you are just instructing in the guiding. So how do you involve learners? Please be able to tell that to yourself. Ask that question to yourself and be able to tell it. And as long as you see there's, there's dots there, it means that there is more information in the book that you need to find and, and the reads. How to involve learners in college activities? So the first uh, one here was how to involve learners in constructing activities. Now it's how to involve learners in collage activities. How, what is, but first you need to know what is a constructing activity. Only what is needed for that and how can learners be involved. And then for the collage you need to know what is a collage activity. What do you need for a collage activity? And how do you get the children or the learners become part of that specific collage activity? Once you know those three different procedures, you already know what a collage activity is and you are able to take it on. You are able to teach it in class. Remember, you can only, with arts, you can only teach children things that you are able to do yourself. If you can't do them, then how are you able even going to, 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 to assess them to say here you did well or here you did it, you need to improve and what and you need to what is a collage activity? What materials are needed for a collage activity? So as for a construction activity, how do children, how do learners become part of how do they get involved? How do they start doing this specific activity? You need to know that. And also making your own uh, teaching materials in junior pre primary the first teaching materials that you will need, they say, is posters. Because children like posters and they should be careful. So, so you, you need to read the, what, what materials, your own materials. The first thing they said you need the materials is posters. You will need theme posters, theme posters, as well as teaching posters. So what are the theme posters? What are the teaching posters? It's all in your book. It's for you just to familiarize your slides to the book. And when they talk of theme pictures, you are able to say that, no, when I'm going to collect what I need now is theme pictures so, or, or theme posters. So what type of uh, pictures are those? Also, Unit 5, how to prepare and present a practical art lesson. There are two opposing approaches of this uh, teaching of, and doing art. There is one that is called the product-centered philosophy and while the other is called the process-centered method. So what is the difference between the two? In the uh, in centered, um, in the product-centered philosophy, that most of the classrooms in Namibia, you will still find that the teachers uses product uh, methods, while the other is, in the, in the, this one is recognizes art as a process and not as a product. So. The, the, the product, the, the, the product method sees art as the final product without cons considering the process, how you arrive to make the, 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 the product. While the process standard recognizes the process, what do you need for you to be able to come up that, uh, with that product that is now uh, 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 is the only one that is considered in, in the centered philosophy. So I think they said in Namibia we use the product, but I think 
we, we should we should start using the process centered method so that we understand we know the process of producing an artwork instead of just looking at a product and when we say it's a it's, it's an art piece it's a drawing but we don't know how did it become a drawing what we used how what did the artist do to, to, to arrive to, to 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 that specific drawing so i think um this is a, it's one thing that we should do we should consider even when you are teaching don't go for just the product go for the process so that your learners are able to understand that i take newspapers i put them in the water after three days i come back to them i mix them with glue then i start collaging making an image of something then yes we can say that we are talking of an art learning also unit six which is the last unit it says that examine the teaching and the learning activities and materials for visual arts, grade one to three. Learning activities and materials for visual art projects do to demonstrate line pattern. So actually line pattern, there should be a comma there. There must be an error. Color, shape, texture and space. And you already you know that those are elements of art. So here we used the example of lines, but uh, as it says that it's lines, it's patterns, it's color, it's shape, and all those. So grade one demonstrate different types of lines to make shapes representing objects and to show expressions such as thin lines representing thin rain or, or lighter rain. So grade two demonstrate different types of lines to show edges and then grade three demonstrate different types of lines to to show age and expressions such as career lines and all that but if you look at all these three different grades the activity or the example it's line so it says what does the line used in grade one that is what it's used for what does line used in grade two that is what is used for what does line used in grade three that is what line used for now you need to go ahead and then color what does i mean patterns what does patterns or how does patterns used in grade one how does it used in grade two how does it used in grade uh, um, three same with uh, with colors how does colors used in grade one two three and four how does uh, shape what type of shapes can you expect in grade one grade two grade three so it's the same thing but you need to know according to, 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 to the grades. Okay, here you have got a list of uh, uh, artists. These ones are actually artists from Namibia. And uh, what should you know about this specific art? Because you need to know about your Namibian artist. And I tell you, this a mistake that always students repeatedly make. Why? Because you don't know the mediums or the disciplines of art. You don't know how visual art is differ from performing arts. In your visual art paper, you are asked give five different examples or, or, or names of Namibian artists that you have learned in your book. Then you go and tell the people the dog, Gaza, and Nashimu. But are these fine art artists? These are musicians. They are performing artists. They are not visual artists. Therefore, if you list those type of people in your visual art, art, um, art paper, it's, it's a wrong answer. These are not the only ones. They are more in your book. But you need to know that your subject is visual art. And what does a visual artist do? A visual artist they paint, they draw, they collage, they also photograph, they, they, they sculpt. They, they do lots of that to do with the hands. Performing artists, they act, they sing, they dance, they, they perform poems. Those, and that is not nothing unless somewhere in a way you are writing about a Namibia, a fine art artist, and you want to bring them comparing or giving example. But you must know that they are not a visual art artist. So here I only gave you six of them, but you need to know them. What do you need to know about them? You need to know their names. You need to know their works. Do they paint? Do they draw? You need to know their subject matters. What do they paint about? Is it about politics? Is it about uh, animals? Is it about culture? Or what is it? Hmm? 
you need what type of message in their artworks what do they they tell and then here there are also some important uh, terminologies that you should know they are from your your your, your IOL study guide and they are not the only ones they are a lot there but I highlighted a few that I think they will be very useful for you as you are preparing for your exam. So when we talk of balance in visual arts, what do we refer to? We are not talking about gender equality here 50-50 to balance whatsoever, but we are referring to balance within a drawing, a balance without in a painting. What do what does balancing in a painting mean? What what is color? What is the color within the visual art? Con what does the color symbolize within the visual art context? What is dominance when you look at the art piece? What is that? What is green? Green is just also a color, but what is it? How is it achieved? What type of uh, group of color is it? Is it a primary? Is it a secondary? Or is it um, a tertiary color? Then we talk of a harmony within the piece of art that you're looking at. When we talk of harmony, is not about being in a country which is peace and we live in peace and harmony. We are referring to visual arts and we are referring to a piece of art. How it's about how you, you analyze a painting. A line. What is a line within? It's not a line of people queuing up for, 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 for some medical treatments or whatsoever. It's a line that is as a line as an element of art and what it contributes. What does it draw within the, in the art, visual art context? Also, a red, which is also a color. Then you scribbling a uh, stage, a self-expression, secondary colors, proportional, variety. I just took these uh, terms randomly because they are the most terms that I think they are very sensitive for you, and they can confuse you easily. That's why I want you to take time and know these specific. Uh, um, uh, terms in, 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 in details because they are very important for, for your exam. Okay, just to, to go back to slide one or to the introduction, as, as we are saying that uh, this short presentation it's about your exam, your examination, your August, the upcoming exam. So each and every information given in this specific it's very important for your exam. It, 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 it covers everything you expect in the exam and even more to that. So it's for you to go to a specific information. What is art? Read what art is. Understand it. Go in the book and read more about it. And it's the same with each and every specific information given in, uh, in this specific uh, um, uh, uh, slides. Maybe I'll just say that your exam it's, 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 a, it's a out of 120, and you should get a 60, 60 for you to be able to, 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 to get 50 marks for you to pass. That means if you get 60, your 60 is multiplied with 100, and it will give you 6,000. And that 6,000 is divided with 120, and it will give you a 50 marks, then you pass. Hmm? Otherwise, it, 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 it's a very, very, very good uh, exam for you, and I'm looking forward to, 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 to marking your scripts. Or if I can give you further information and tell that the structure of your, of your, of your, of your, of your exam, it, it, it's, it's, uh, you have got true or false questions there, you have got matching words there, you have got the description of, of, of terminologies there, and you have got the structured questions there. That means this is you need to study. For you to be able to know whether the sentence is true or false, you need to know the description of a specific word. That's why you don't know to go and guess there. And that is why it's more required for you to, to, to read and understand your information. Hmm? There is no way you can say it's true if you don't know what it is. Or to know that this word matches the description of that specific word if you don't know what that word means. That means uh, it, it, you need to use this information 
get your slides get your book and also read accordingly so part of your exam also read the instructions on the cover page because they tell you what are you expected to do in the paper read each and every question from where it starts to it ends so that you understand it and what is expected of you don't just because you see name the stage of development then you already started to list, uh, list, uh, listing them because maybe the question when the theater to say name the 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 stage of development and then describe what happens that specific stage read the questions and understand them read the question what do i mean by understand understand what is the question asking you to do if you are listing you are just giving a name if you are describing you are giving a name and more information to that specific image. if you are explaining is the same thing look at the mark allocations a question says 10 marks then you only give a name where do you expect to get the other the other nine marks from hmm? you should read the question and write as long as you are within the visual art context read and when you are answering write apply your knowledge of understanding and the knowledge you can only apply them if you understand the question if you don't understand the question you can write about anything but the question are you making sense when you are writing okay all the best with your exams and uh, i'm looking forward to to be marking you or maybe because here it's only given my, my email address but i can also give my cell phone number but please only if it's your slides purposes write it down 081 33 83070 that's 081 33 83070 i thank you